The other side of Japan's fascinating culture can be found in more traditional forms. Swordsmithing is an art that takes years to perfect, and here in suburban Tokyo, Yoshindo and his apprentices are carrying on this beautiful craft. Between the 3rd and 6th centuries, there was straight swords coming from the Asian continent. But then around the mid-10th century, the Japanese put the curve into the sword, you know, and made it uniquely Japanese. Right. You know, and it's more an art form, isn't it, these days? Well, it's a general misconception that Japanese swords are, are killing weapons. Obviously, mm. they have been at some point, but they're a beautiful art object. Mm. They're a, an object of spiritual significance, you know, for your own spiritual protection. Mm. Right. So they're, they're, the, they're the most precious treasure to the gods of Japan and, and the emperor, the imperial family as well. Oh, fantastic. Very well, son. With only around 50 practicing swordsmiths like Yoshindo producing, on average, 10 swords a year, they are highly prized possessions both here in Japan and overseas. Uh, Art piece. <laughs> Uh, very beautiful functional art. Amazing. Get the light in the blade and the pattern of the hammer will pop out and you'll be able to see it very clearly. It contains the idiosyncrasies of the swordsmith, like, kind of like handwriting. This is a, a row of clove blossoms. With modern swords, uh, because there's no modern developments with swords, you know, they mirror images of past uh, workmanship. But at the same time, they want to put some of their own originality into it so that when you appreciate a blade, it, be, it can be appraised to even the modern makers, you know. So this is one of the best in, in Japan. It's all very, very interesting. Did you, oh, hmm? did you um, write this book? I, I write the book. So I said that this is the best book. But, oh, no, this is the best one. Um, I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs>